Hi. So, I might start a dirty laundry series. You know, my life's not perfect, and I know a lot of you guys, your life's not perfect. And I think I'm going to start telling some stories about some things. Some of it's interesting, some of it's sad, some of it's kind of amazing that somebody pulled through, those kind of things. So, uh, I think I'm going to start a dirty laundry series, yeah. And I'm going to start kind of general with um, something for all the grandmas and grandpas and aunties and uncles who are watching the, the next generation, maybe going through some things that are painful for them. And um, I'm just going to tell you what what I did this past weekend because I was at a family reunion. And, and my intention was originally to talk to my oldest grandchild. She just turned 13 and she's going through some things right now watching the grown-ups be stupid. Okay, and her dad is in a relationship that's not good. It's not good. And she's living with her mom and I love her mom, okay? Her mom's got her own issues too, but she's she's still a pretty good mother, okay? So I'm I'm not mad at her. She's doing the best she can, right? And um She's doing the best she can to take care of the girls. So, you know, first of all, I'm going to say, anybody who says, not my child, you've heard it, they're, they're, they're very ignorant, okay? You're blind. You need to open your eyes and start being realistic because none of us are going to spend 100% of the time with our kids or our grandkids and they are their own little people and they will figure out ways to do things when you're not around, okay? And we all know that sometimes it can be dangerous and they can be making decisions as young teenagers that will affect them for the rest of their life, okay? So that's where my motivation is. And then looking at the example that the immediate adults are setting in the life for them, sometimes it's not good, you know? They they didn't do exactly what I'm trying to prevent these grandkids and nieces and so on from doing. So, without going into too much detail, because there is privacy involved for these people, but um, <clears throat> my granddaughters have been exposed to some unpleasantness. I'll just put it that way. They've seen some things that aren't good. You know, my, she's going into middle school, she's 13, she is now officially a teenager. And so, I sat her down, you know, I was trying to be gentle too, I know she loves her dad and he's kind of stuck right now, and um, so I didn't want to hurt her feelings, but I wanted to acknowledge her feelings too, and I did, you know, I said, you know, I know you're seeing things hearing things and experiencing things and I let her know she's not the only person a lot of people go through hard times with their kids and it's not fair and it's not fair I don't care what you say it's not fair you know I had a hard childhood I did the best I could it wasn't perfect to try to prevent my kids from being exposed to some of the things that I was exposed to I did the best I could but you know like I said they're out in the world too and you know, it's not 100%, plus, you know, they have their own lives, and other magical things just seem to pop up, I mean that sarcastically, okay, black magic, anyway, you know, they have their own trials and tribulations that they have to go through, because we all have it, and so I was letting her know that, you know, she's not alone, everybody goes through stuff, she's not alone, and how much I love her, and um, I told her, to use this, the things that she sees the grown-ups doing that she knows is wrong, she knows it's dumb, she knows it's dangerous, she knows all the things, right? So she's got wisdom. She's not dumb. She is not dumb. She's seeing the results of what happens when you do certain things or when you act a certain way, okay? And she can use that wisdom in her own life so that she doesn't have to be miserable like these grown-ups are or get herself addicted like some grown-ups do or do things to her children or expose her children to things that she's been exposed to. 
and she seemed to acknowledge it you know that she understood where I was coming from and I said it right in front of her mother I, I you know I didn't hold back I didn't hold back it wasn't because I wasn't trying to point fingers we all know what's going on so there's no sense in being accusatory they have to work their way out of it well, later on another family member who also happens to be outwardly the perfect one you know that one right the one who always seems to have everything under control well some things came out and apparently she has a very serious alcohol problem yes she is the only one that got that drunk and I mean she was wasted and started acting like a fool trying to pick a fight so on and so forth well, the family reunion ended, and we were kind of at a park, so we were in the middle of the woods. We're actually in West Virginia, and you know, that's mountains, so it's curvy country roads, right? And she's going to leave. Well, she had a long drive to get back to her house, so another family member decided to just get some hotel rooms because, you know, it would be easier to just stay, like, as a group with the grandkids and so on and so forth. Um, all together <clears throat> so we had to box her in so that we could kind of keep an eye on her and she couldn't go zooming up the road and crash into a tree but she was still driving all over the road and somehow somehow um, we managed because she normally wouldn't do something like this I mean normally she wouldn't allow something like that but she let her daughter get in the car with me so um, daughter was safe but she could see the way she was driving and she's calling her daughter and saying ridiculous scary hurtful things to her that she shouldn't have been saying it was just ridiculous just ridiculous so we got to the hotel and trying to get everybody in and another family member is trying to talk her into coming in and stop riding around the parking lot well I'm still with her daughter you know at this point I didn't want her somehow trying to get her daughter in the car and drive all the way back to northern Virginia it was a long ride I didn't want to do that so I'm sitting with her well her daughter you know she just clings on me and she's crying her little eyes out and I felt so bad she made me cry so I you know I told her the same thing I said this is I know it's hard it's hard to watch it's hard to go through it's not going to last forever because it won't. It won't last forever. And, I, you know, I told her this is giving her wisdom too. And so that's what my message is. If you have, if you have little ones in your family that are going through things and they're in, you know, there's only, you feel like there's only so much you can do, just remind them that they're not dumb. And they don't have to act like that. If they see you know, there's there's good examples and there's bad examples. A bad example will tell you what not to do. Just remind them that. And don't let them forget that they're not alone and that there's a lot of people that love them and that, you know, you pray for them or whatever you do. Um, so, yep, that's my dirty laundry. Part one. Or the first load. I don't know. I have more. I have a really interesting story I'm going to tell you about. But... Um, anyway, this is why I shouldn't be doing this when I'm driving, aside from the fact that people are going to kill me one day. Um, if you like these kind of videos, please subscribe. Give me a thumbs up. I got all kinds of different things, so there's a variety. You don't have to watch all of them, just what you're interested in. And um, give me a like if you want to see my store all the stores that I sell things on. That's all down in the description, along with my social media accounts if you want to follow me. And um, I will be back again soon because I have some more dirty laundry to come out. But this is an old story. I can't wait to tell you about it. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.